Salahuddin had always been a man of few words, preferring to let his actions speak for him. Tall and imposing, with piercing eyes that seemed to see through to a person's soul, he commanded respect without having to ask for it. He was a man of honor, of integrity, and of unwavering faith. Born into a humble family in Tikrit, Salahuddin had always been drawn to the teachings of Islam. From a young age, he showed a keen interest in matters of faith and philosophy, often spending hours in deep contemplation. His parents, recognizing his potential, sent him to study under the renowned scholar Imad ad-Din al-Isfahani, where he excelled in his studies and quickly rose through the ranks. As Salahuddin grew older, his reputation as a wise and just leader spread far and wide. He was known for his compassion towards the poor and needy, his fairness in dealing with disputes, and his bravery on the battlefield. It was these qualities that caught the attention of the reigning Sultan Nur ad-Din, who appointed Salahuddin as his vizier, the highest position in the land. Under Salahuddin's guidance, the Sultan's empire flourished, trade routes were established, cities prospered, and peace reigned throughout the land. But Salahuddin's greatest test was yet to come. When Nur ad-Din died, his young son, Al-Afdal, ascended to the throne. Al-Afdal was a weak and ineffective ruler, more interested in pleasure than in governing. Sensing an opportunity, the Christian crusaders launched a series of attacks on Muslim territories, capturing Jerusalem and slaughtering its inhabitants. Salahuddin knew that he could not stand idly by and watch as his people suffered. Gathering his forces, he marched towards Jerusalem, determined to retake the city and restore peace to the region. The journey was long and arduous, but Salahuddin's determination never wavered. As the Muslim armies approached Jerusalem, the crusaders prepared for battle. Salahuddin's army camped outside the walls of Jerusalem, preparing for the inevitable confrontation. The city loomed before them, its towering walls a testament to the strength of its defenders. But Salahuddin was undaunted. He knew that victory was not just a matter of military might, but of patience, strategy, and resolve. As the siege dragged on, tensions ran high among the soldiers. Supplies dwindled, Morale wavered, and the heat of the desert sun beat down relentlessly. But Salahuddin remained steadfast, his presence a beacon of hope and determination for his men. Finally, after weeks of siege, Salahuddin ordered a full-scale assault on the city. The Muslim armies surged forward, their battle cries echoing off the walls of Jerusalem. The defenders fought fiercely, raining arrows and boiling oil down upon the attackers. But Salahuddin's forces were relentless, pressing on despite the mounting casualties. The battle raged on for days, each side locked in a desperate struggle for control of the city. Salahuddin himself led the charge, his sword flashing in the sunlight as he cut down his foes with expert precision. His presence inspired his men to new heights of bravery, and soon the tide began to turn in their favor. As the sun set on the final day of battle, Salahuddin stood atop the walls of Jerusalem, looking out over the city he had fought so hard to reclaim. The streets ran red with blood, and the cries of the wounded filled the air. But amidst the carnage, there was a sense of triumph, of justice restored. Salahuddin knew that the true test lay not in victory, but in how it was achieved. And so, he issued a proclamation to the people of Jerusalem, declaring that all who wished to leave the city unharmed were free to do so. He also ordered that the Christian holy sites be protected and respected, a gesture of goodwill and tolerance that earned him the respect of his enemies. In the days that followed, Salahuddin set about rebuilding Jerusalem, restoring its walls and fortifications, and ensuring that its people were cared for. His actions were not those of a conqueror, but of a ruler who sought peace and reconciliation. As news of Salahuddin's victory spread, he became a legend, a hero to many. His name was spoken with reverence, and his deeds were celebrated in song and story. The people hailed him as a savior, 
a beacon of hope in a turbulent world. But for Salahuddin, the greatest reward was knowing that he had fulfilled his duty as a Muslim and as a human being. He had not sought glory or power, but had fought for justice and righteousness, guided by his faith and his conscience. And so Salahuddin continued to rule with wisdom and compassion, his reign marked by prosperity and peace. He was a just ruler, beloved by his people and respected by his enemies. His legacy endured long after his death, a testament to his character and his values. Salahuddin was not just a man of his time, but a man for all time. His example inspired people of all faiths and backgrounds to strive for justice, peace, and righteousness, ensuring that his memory would never fade, but would continue to inspire future generations.